fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Pilot Pete can fly a jet. He's 12 years old and the fastest yet. He can loop the loop because he knows he's got so power. Cheerios, yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing old cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Mort Kinney was a newcomer in the territory near Rockstone. He bought the Bar C Ranch and established himself as a large-scale cattleman. When an outlaw gang began operations in the territory, the people looked to Mort for leadership and advice. He immediately called a meeting of the citizens of Rockstone to discuss the situation. Men, you all know why we're having this meeting. We can't expect to prosper while that gang is running off our cattle stealing our payrolls and robbing the local bank. Uh, the gang's too smart for the law. Yeah, the sheriff can't stop it. Tonight, tonight I'm sending a personal letter to the United States Marshal in Pecos asking him to help. I figure maybe an outside lawman coming here might get a new slant on how the outlaws operate and get a line on them. Hey, how does that sound to you, man? <laughs> That night at his ranch house, Mort finished the letter and handed it to his foreman, Rusty. Yeah, here's a letter, Rusty. See that it's mailed first thing in the morning. Well, sure, but uh, Mort, I don't savvy. You're asking that United States Marshal to come here and help round up your own gang. <laughs> don't worry, Rusty. I've outsmarted that Marshal before. The fact that I'm the one who wrote him to come here will keep suspicion from me and my men. <laughs> I'll mail that letter... I promise you have nothing to worry about. A week later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail toward Rockstone. Tonto was saying, Kimasabi, you not say wild marshal in Pecos send you a message asking we ride to Rockstone. He received a request from a rancher named Mort Kinney asking for help, Tonto. There's an outlaw gang operating in that territory, and the local sheriff and posse haven't been able to cope with the situation. Oh. Well, why Marshall not come? He has urgent business elsewhere for several days. That's why I asked us to come down here. We ride into town, talk to sheriff? No, Toro, we'll work independently for the time being. When the proper time comes, we'll get in touch with the sheriff and show him the letter I carry. Oh. Uh, gang must have plenty smart leader. Yes. We'll do our best to stop him. We'll find a campsite in the hills close to town, and we'll operate from there. Come on, Tonto. I'm That night, the gang prepared to strike again. In a grove of cottonwoods behind the bank, Mort Kinney stood smoking a cigar and waiting 
as the men, moving through the shadows one by one, joined him. Yeah. Finally, they were all there. Yeah. Well, men, it looks like we're ready. All, all set. set. Oh. Use your neckerchiefs to mask your faces. Yeah. Rusty and I'll stand here and act as lookout. Joe, you and the others force the back window. Right, boss. You got the blast ready to blow the safe? Yeah. Good. As soon as you get out, head into the shadows. Then when the crowd gathers, join them one by one. Now, go get the cash. Right. Here we go. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cafe was crowded with townsmen and cattlemen from the outlying districts. They were suddenly startled by a muffled blast. Hey, what was that? I don't know. Hey, from outside. Well, come on, let's see. Yeah. Come on. Everything's quiet now. Don't see anything going on. Hey, where's the well, What happened? Where'd that explosion come from? Inside the bank. I was passing and saw the flash, then heard the blast. I figured somebody's robbing the bank. You say that explosion came from the bank? That's right, Sheriff. Holy mackerel. Must be that gang again. Come on, we'll go find out about it. <laughs> following morning, Tonto went into town for supplies. When he returned, he brought news of a bank robbery. The Lone Ranger questioned him closely. You say nobody saw the crooks leaving, Tonto? Uh-huh. Me hear him say that. All right. I'll disguise my features and wear the cowpoke clothes I carry in my saddlebags. Then we we'll go to town. I'd like to look over the ground behind the bank. Later, the Lone Ranger, without his mask but completely disguised, rode to town with Tonto. Oh, scout, oh, scout. Oh, easy, easy, scout, easy, scout. They left Silver and Scout among the trees at the edge of town, then walked behind the buildings to the rear of the bank. There, they inspected the ground thoroughly. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved slowly about, they finally reached the Cottonwood Grove. Mm, there are marks of many boots here among trees. Yes, but some of the crowd might have wandered back here, Tonto. Oh, wait, here's something. Uh-huh. What that? Two cigar butts. Look. One of them is very short. The other has been less than half smoked. The cigar band is still on the longer one. Mm. Why do you think cigar butts important? It may mean that someone waited here long enough to smoke one cigar and start another. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. El Moros is the brand name. Anyone could stand here smoking. We'll try to find out who uses this brand of cigars. Maybe plenty of fellas smoke same brand. Maybe. Come on, we'll go to the general store. Ah. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto entered the general store. Yeah, howdy, stranger. Something for you? You sell El Moro's cigars? El Moro's? Nope. Too expensive for my trade. El Moro's are brought in from Monterey. You mean no one around Rockstone uses that brand? Not that I know of. Anyway, no one buys them from me because you don't stock them. <laughs> like I said, they're too doggone expensive. Thanks. Go on, Tonto. Uh-huh. Lone Ranger and Tonto were in the cafe, hoping to pick up news, when the sheriff entered. You got a line on the bank robber, Sheriff? Nope. We searched the countryside. We couldn't find him. I noticed the Bar C cow folks didn't come back, would you? They give up? Well, Mort Kinney and his men stuck with the posse till the end, like they always do. But they left us out near the Bar C. Doggone his hide, Mort Kinney seems to be laughing at me lately. It's beginning to get on my nerves. What makes you think that? Well, just before we parted out on the trail, he says, Well, better luck next time, Sheriff. But don't worry. Maybe the marshal will come and capture that gang for you. Then he laughs and says, Here, have a cigar and forget your troubles. He leaned over and stuck this cigar in my vest pocket. Give it to someone who'll appreciate it more than I do, Jed. All right, I might even try it myself, Sheriff. I'm going to my office. I hope that United States Marshal does come here and find the gang. Then I'll resign and take up farming. See you later, boy. Hello. Did you see that cigar? Ah. It's an El Moros. Ah. That same kind you find in Grove? Yes. The sheriff said he received it from what Kitty. You think maybe him in with gang? I don't know. We'll find out all we can about him. Mort Kitty may lead us to the gang we came to find. Further inquiry by the Lone Ranger and Tonto brought out the fact that Mort Kinney was a big rancher and president of the Cattlemen's Association. The Lone Ranger and Tonto walked to the trees on the edge of town. 
and then rode toward their camp in the hills. Easy, 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 Come on, get them up, scout. What we do now, Kimo Sabi? Well, we've learned Mort Kinney is owner of the Bar C Spread. He's president of the Cattlemen's Association, well respected around here. Uh huh. You remember Kinney is the man who wrote to the Marshal and Pecos asking for his help. That mean you not think Kinney crook? Under the circumstances, Toto, no one's above suspicion. Kinney smokes El Moro cigars. The storekeeper knows of no one else who does. Uh-huh. It isn't much to go on, but I'd like to know more about Kinney. I've decided to go to his ranch and apply for a job. You take job as cop oak? Yes, for a short time, if he's willing to take me. You live at the camp and keep in touch with me. If I need you, you'll be ready. Ah. I'll take Scout and turn off the trail that goes to the Bar C. You ride Silver on the camp. I don't come there shortly. You'll know I've been accepted as a cowhand. Uh huh. For the next few nights after dusk, come there. Stay out of sight near the bunkhouse and give our usual signal. I'll manage to meet you and tell you what progress I've made. Come on, Silver. I'm a scout. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Hey there, get a load of this terrific offer. Now you can get a copy of a real, genuine, original Confederate bill free in each specially marked package of Cheerios. There are nine different bills in the whole set, ranging from $1 to $1,000. And each bill looks so much like the original Confederate bill, you can hardly tell the difference. Say, won't you and your gang have fun with these? As I said, one bill comes free with each special Cheerios package. No waiting, nothing to send in. It's right at your grocer's. If you get a $2 bill in your first package, you may get a $500 bill in the next, and so on. It's easy to collect the whole set of nine different bills. And I bet you'll want to be the first in your neighborhood to have them all. And you'll have something else that's good, too. Cheerios. Seems everybody loves that wonderful toasted oat flavor. And everybody needs the go power Cheerios gives. Remember now, inside each special Cheerios package, there's a copy of a real genuine Confederate bill. Start collecting yours today. Now, to continue. Later, still disguised as a cowpoke, the Lone Ranger, riding a paint horse scout, reached the Bar C Ranch House and stopped at the corral. Who's your Did he? What do you want here, stranger? I uh, came to see Mr. Kinney. I'm the foreman here. Maybe I can help you. If you don't mind, I'd rather speak to your boss. What about? I'll tell him. Look, mister, I'm the foreman. That's all the palaver about over there, Rusty. Well, this army wants to see you, boss. He doesn't say what he wants. Well, mister, what is it you do want? You are Mr. Mort Kinney? That's right. Good. I came to ask for a job. What's your name? Oh, just call me Tex. Yeah. Well, Tex, I have all the help I need right now. Anyhow, I don't take on strangers. How would I know you aren't running from the law or something like that? <laughs> you wouldn't know unless I told you, Mr. Kinney. <laughs> Come on inside and we'll talk it over. Uh, Rusty, you know what to do with these whores. Sure. Well, you attend to it then. Come on, Tex. We'll go into the ranch house. Mort Kinney and the Lone Ranger entered the ranch house, where the rancher asked more questions, none of them important. He discussed the pay and the duties required. Finally, as he saw Rusty pass a window, Mort said, Well, I reckon it's all settled then, Tex. I'll give you a try for a week or two. Oh, here. You have a cigar. I'll buy him by the box. Sorry I don't smoke cigars. Looks like a good brand, though. Oh, <laughs> the best. El Moro's. Have to order them special from Monterey. That's interesting. <laughs> I like my smokes to be the best. Now, you'll excuse me. I want to talk to my foreman a minute. I just saw him pass the window. I'll be right back. Go right ahead, Mr. Kenny. Well, Rusty, did you search the saddlebag? Yeah. I found an Indian's beaded headband and this. Bullet. Huh. Silver bullet. Yeah, I don't savvy that. 
I know the mayor's town where he helps the law. He uses silver bullets. Hmm. As I remember, he has an engine companion who rides a paint horse. It could be that... My thunder! It's just the sort of thing that masked man would do. What? Change horses with his Indian friend. Pose as a sail bum and come here looking for a job. Somehow he may have become suspicious of us. You mean you think Tex is the one you spoke of as the masked hombre? That's just what I think. What are you going to do? Give him a job range ride. You're loco. Now, smart. You assign him to the West Range ride her tonight. Tomorrow night, take some of the men, mask your faces, and rustle a few of our own cattle. What for? The hombre we know is Tex will try to stop you. See that he gets a bullet. Later... I'll report to the sheriff that a gang rustled my cattle and killed my new range rider. Mark returned to the ranch house and engaged the lone ranger as a ranch hand. He was assigned by the foreman to ride the range at night. Unknown to the two men, the lone ranger had seen Rusty show Mort Kinney the beaded headband and the silver bullet. He realized Tonto had failed to empty scout saddlebags when they changed horses. And he knew that Mort was now certain he was not a regular cowhand. Just after supper that evening, the Lone Ranger lounged in the bunkhouse with the other men, waiting for the time he was to leave for the range. Then, the hoot of an owl, repeated, was the signal from Tonto. The Lone Ranger waited a few minutes. Then, nonchalantly rising from his bunk, he sauntered from the bunkhouse. Making sure he wasn't observed, he hurried to the woods behind the building. You savvy. Yes, Toto. You find out anything? Yes. Toto, you forgot to empty your saddlebags before I rode scout. The foreman searched them and found a beaded headband and a silver bullet. No, oh, that bad. I feel certain they're sure I'm not really a cowhand, so they haven't said anything. Me sorry, me not more careful. Well, that's all right. You don't often make a slip, Toto. They don't know I've learned about it. I've been assigned to ride at night on the West Range. Well, maybe them plan to kill you. Perhaps, but I'll be on guard. You watch each night here. The men start out together in the direction of the West Range. Take this letter and go for the sheriff. Bring him and his men out there. Now I must go back and go on the job. I'll see you later. Uh -huh. The first night passed without incident. The following day, the Lone Ranger noticed that the men were unfriendly and eyed him constantly. The second night, after the Lone Ranger had left, Tonto, waiting in the shadows near the bunkhouse, heard Mort Kinney tell his men to gun the Lone Ranger and drive off some cattle to make it appear as though the rustlers had done the killing. It's time for me to go for Sheriff. The moon was bright as the Lone Ranger rode the range. He was still riding Tonto's horse scout. Suddenly, he saw horsemen coming over the ridge, driving a few head of cattle before them. Come on, Scout. Move the woods, fella. The Lone Ranger reached the cover of the trees just as the outlaws began to shoot. Oh, Scout, who? They left the cattle and turned in his direction. The masked man turned and fired several shots. Then he saw another group of horsemen coming over the ridge. The moonlight glistened on the shiny coat of his own horse, Silver, who was carrying Tato. The Lone Ranger knew the sheriff and posse had arrived. Followed by the outlaws, he headed through the woods with the intention of going to the ranch house. Come on, Scout. Hurry, fella. Before the outlaws could reach the trees, the posse moved up on them in a semicircle, firing as they came. The sheriff's men far outnumbered Rusty and his gun slicks. Some of them were wounded and captured. The others, including Rusty, fled with the sheriff and part of the posse in hot pursuit. Yeah, yeah. Later at the ranch house, Mort Kinney was taken by surprise when... Raise your door, move. Kinney. Tex, what's your idea? What are you doing here? And why the gun? You're the one to answer questions, Kinney. Why did you send Rusty and the men to the West Range tonight? Uh, if they went there, I know nothing about it. I don't savvy what this is all about. Hey, what's going on? Stand right where you are. We got a law, man. Get inside, all of you. 
Rusty, what's the meaning of this? Mr. Kenny, looks like your own men were rustling some of your cattle tonight. Rusty was leading them. We caught them red-handed. And all of them were mashed with neckerchiefs. I think you've made a mistake, Sheriff. I suspect that this man Tex is holding the gun on me of being in with the outlaw gang. I told Rusty to keep an eye on him. Yeah? And why were they driving away some of the cattle? They came there to kill me and to steal the cattle, Sheriff. I think that's the gang you've been hunting. If Kenny knew about it... I knew nothing about it. What's all this, Rusty? You did know about it. Sure, Rusty. Rusty. Kenny, we're taking your foreman and the men to jail as rustlers. Like I told you, we caught him in the act. No, you can't do that. Kenny sent us out there. We were acting under orders. He's lying, Sheriff. I reckon Rusty was leading some of my own ranch hands against me all this time. Wait a minute. You're not going to railroad us to jail so you can skip the territory. Wait, wait, wait. Wait from Sheriff. These men will back me up. Mort Kenny's the leader of the gang you want. We all took orders from him. You'll find the bank loot he got last night, and he's safe over there. Yeah. I'll have a look. Keep him covered, man. Oh, there he is. By thunder, here it is. In regular bank wrappers. Kenny, you're under arrest, you and all of your men. We got the goods on you at last. You sure outsmarted us plenty. But you outsmarted yourself when you wrote to the marshal for help. Hey, sure it was that phony cowpoke who caused all the trouble. And now he's gone. You let him get away. The cowboy you speak of left with his Indian friend. I know who they are. And it was a mistake to try to go against him. He was smart enough, Kinney, to get a line on you because of a cigar band. The Indian told me about it. <laughs> you sure miss smoking, Elmore's, while you're doing time in prison. <laughs> yes, sir, it's catching on to little things like that that makes a certain mass hombre more clever than any crook. Nope, you just can't put anything over on the Lone Ranger. I don't do it. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It helps a guy feel confident just knowing that champions are made, not born. Otto Graham, famed quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, made himself a champ. Listen, young Otto on his way to fame found football was no sissy game. Took power and speed and head work too. And Graham learned, as champions do, that Wheaties help a guy come through. Now Otto passes for that score and still eats Wheaties even more. Otto Graham's been calling the right breakfast signal for 23 years. A big bowl of Wheaties. He-Man breakfast? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Touchdown, Otto. Let's go, boy. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way. On his way. He's on his way. On his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, Directed by Charles D. Livingston and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time, be sure to listen.